Okay, here's my video for slide number seven on our lesson 533, where we're learning about the law of cosines. Uh, this is the problem where you need to figure out what tool to use. So you had side five, six, and seven, you need to figure out what tool to use and then solve for the missing variable x. And each one is a different tool. When you get to slide seven, the tool that we need to use is the law of cosines. And I know that because I see one angle between two sides and then the side across from my angle is that variable that I'm looking for, x. Um, also can kind of tell because it's a non-right triangle. If it's a non-right triangle, it's either going to be law of cosines or law of sines. Um, and law of cosines, again, is because I have one angle and it's between two side lengths. When I see a law of cosines problem, how I set it up is I see this is my angle, capital C. The, ang the one angle given is my angle, capital C. The angle, or the side length across from my angle is my side length, little c. And I can choose the other two side lengths to be A or B. I'm going to have 11 be my A. I'm going to have 8 be my B. Then it's all about plugging it into our law of cosines equation, which is C squared equals A squared plus B squared uh, minus 2 times A times B times the cosine of capital C, angle capital C, which is the one angle they give you in the problem. Okay. Then I just plug in um, my variables. And so I said my little c was x, so this becomes x squared. My a value is 11, so 11 squared. b value is 8, so that's going to be 8 squared minus 2 times a, which is 11, b times b, which is 8, and then times the cosine, oops, not capital, cosine, of capital C, which I'm calling capital C, that's 16 degrees. All right, so now I have the equation set up. I can actually solve this for x squared, um, but I always follow a precise steps um, so that I don't screw up my calculations in my calculator. Because if you plug this all in your calculator, it might read it wrong. Um, so I go next step to x squared, and then I do all the squaring. And so 11 squared is 121, 8 squared is 64. Uh, minus, negative 2 times 11 times 8. That's how I see that, is negative 2 times 11 times 8. Um, and what that gives me is negative 167, so minus 167 here, times the cosine of 16. That's my next step. All right? This step here, what I do is I'll add these two together, and I'm going to leave the negative one, or the minus 167 times cosine of 16 alone. So I end up getting x squared. Adding those two together, I get 185 minus 176 cosine uh, times the cosine of 16. Now I'm going to do this multiplication here. And the way I do this multiplication, here you could maybe plug this into your calculator um, if you use parentheses correctly. Um, but I still wait one more turn. And what I do is I do negative 176 times the cosine of 16. And when I do that, and let's write out the first part, which is x squared equals 185. And then let's do this uh, multiplication here. Negative 176 times the cosine of 16 gives me a negative 169.182. So this becomes a minus 169.182. And I like to see this, like I did it here too with negative 176 times the cosine of 16. And then I just carry whatever sign that gives me. If it gives me a positive, then I would use positive down here. Same thing goes for what I did here. I used the negative 176 times the cosine of 16. It gave me a negative number. So I just carry the negative down and make it a subtraction problem still. Okay. That's the way I do it. You could probably uh, try it a different way. And you could, when I get to a final answer, you can check on your calculator. Hey, maybe I can just plug in from here and I can get that final answer on my calculator. Um, and that would be okay too. I just like to show each step because it's nice to break it down, make sure you get it right each and every time. Um, so I'm here right now. I only have a couple steps left. I have x squared after I do this subtraction. Uh, which is 185 minus 169.182, and I just round when I did that multiplication, I rounded it to 0.182. I get 15.818, and then I have to just square root both sides. Square rooting both sides. Uh, let's plug it in. It gives me uh, square root of 15.818 is 3.9. Let's do 3.98. That's what it would be when it's rounded, though. 
is that length of that side C right there. Um, if you got something, you know, approximately close to four, your rounding could be different. Um, you know, if you plugged it all in your calculator here and got something a little different but close to uh, 3.98, that's okay too. I know mine's a little off because I rounded this number right here, this one, 69.182. All right, big thing again to realize, all right, the calculation is important. Knowing to uh, make sure you're precise on each step and you're not screwing up a step in there is huge. But make sure you just see from the beginning that this is a law of cosines problem. Again, because it's a non-right triangle and you have one angle between two side lengths and the side across from your angle is the x that you're looking for.